to join us today. Uh, hold on one moment. Let's get that going. Okay. Uh, so my name is Tom Kilkenny. Uh, I have about 28 years as a wealth manager. And just over the last uh, year and a half, I've come to uh, Weiss Financial Ratings providing uh, unbiased um, you know, financial ratings for, uh, for the most part, uh, public library patrons like yourself. Um, we are 42 years at Gray House Publishing, a little over 40 years at Weiss Financial Ratings. So uh, combined, there's over 80 years worth of experience for uh, financial ratings. And we are not affiliated with any company whatsoever. So uh, any of the advice that you're going to get or the ratings, uh, the buy, sell, or uh, hold recommendations, or any of the financial strength ratings that you're going to see are completely uh, unbiased. Uh, today, I wanted to uh, go over, uh, let me just share my screen here. Hold on one moment. Let's go ahead. And can everyone see my screen right now? I just want to make sure that you guys could all see that. Okay, we have a thumbs up. That means uh, we are good to go there. So uh, what I wanted to go over today uh, for financial literacy basics is the first and foremost is how to make and stick uh, to a budget. Uh, the second uh, portion of our uh, presentation today is going to be what type of investor are you? Um, you know, most people don't know where to start uh, in their investment uh, future or, you know, what type of time horizon they're looking at. And most of the time, some of us get uh, caught up in the rut where we're not saving enough to be able to put away uh, in order to achieve not only short term, but even long term goals like retirement uh, and things of that nature. So I'm going to show on how uh, these two really uh, fall in line with one another. Um, as we take you through our presentation today is, is going to be about 50 minutes, and then we're going to share the last 10 minutes for a Q&A. Uh, so if we could just try to hold any of the questions uh, towards the uh, end of the presentation, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move forward here. Uh, and let me just go ahead. I'm sharing the screen here. So the financial literacy tool that we'll discuss today are all available. It's for free, as been just mentioned, uh, as a library card holder at the San Francisco Public Library. These tools are designed to help you navigate some tough financial decisions so you can make informed decisions about your financial future. Like I spoke about earlier, two of the uh, topics that we'll be covering today is how to make a budget. And there's certainly a, a nice monthly budget uh, worksheet for you. And the next is what type of investor are you? The first thing we want to do is we want to plan for success. The only way to uh, win in life is to have a game plan. And if we don't have any sort of planning, uh, the chances of success are greatly minimized. So from the beginning, building a budget is the best way to get you closer towards your savings goal, not only for your short-term goals, but as your long-term goals as well. Once you have built a budget, you can find out your budget if your budget will allow you to save for a rainy day fund. Most of the times, it's highly recommended to try to have at least six months worth of living expenses put away. I think that now more than ever, with the current pandemic that had taken place, uh, people have really seen the importance of being able to put away uh, a rainy day or some would call it an emergency fund. So after you have saved enough money in the rainy day fund or emergency fund, as some would call it, you may look towards some of uh, your longer term goals and your retirement savings. One of the things we really want to cover today is first and foremost, how do we make a budget? We're going to show you a budget worksheet. We're going to talk about needs versus wants versus goals. We're going to set goals, short, mid, and long term. Now, all of these resources are available to you on the financial literacy suite 
uh, with Weiss financial ratings through the San Francisco Public Library. And I'll certainly, towards the end of the presentation, I'll show you the wonderful resource because these are just two uh, short topics uh, in a whole uh, gamut of topics that are available to you uh, with the Weiss Financial Ratings Financial Literacy Suite online. So how do we pretty much build a budget? How do we make a budget? You know, some people get paid weekly, bi-weekly, some other schedules, some people get paid monthly, uh, but a good number to focus on is a monthly amount. Uh, it's really important that, you know, we derive exactly what it is that we're spending on a monthly basis. If your hours vary, I always say, take a look at the last six to 12 months and just calculate out average monthly wages. Uh, that's always important. You know, we also want to consider any other income, tips, commissions, uh, occasional freelance work, interest earned on investments, uh, as well as funds you receive from other sources, such as family members uh, or what have you. Um, you know, there's a lot of people nowadays that are holding on to uh, second uh, sources of income, whether it be a secondary job, some even carry three jobs at a time. Um, but it's also very important to calculate those into the equation as well. What are your expenses? We need to figure out where your money goes. Track all of your daily expenses for one month, even every cup of coffee, bus ticket, movie tickets. We really want to make sure that we're counting every dime that we're spending on a monthly basis. Write it down what you spend each, each day and what it's actually for. There's a spreadsheet that's available to you on page 17 of the Financial Literacy Basics, How to Make and Stick to a Budget. Um, I know that um, Doreen is going to share that uh, link with you tomorrow, but I'm also gonna show you how, uh, at the end of the presentation, show you how you could go straight in and take a look at it for yourself. Um, and you can use some of these uh, budget worksheets that I think are very useful. Okay, and again, like I was saying earlier on, you wanna account for every penny. It's very important. Here's a monthly budget. These are your incomes, your expenses. You know, fill in your monthly income and your monthly expenses. Rule of thumb is if your monthly expenses are less than your monthly income, plan to put some money into a savings to create that emergency fund. If your monthly expenses are more than your monthly income, then we need to start looking at ways that we need to cut back. Again, we have your wants, your needs, and then your, your goals. So we always got always to make sure that you know, we're accounting for everything. Now, when we talk about needs versus wants versus goals, you know, we have fixed needs. And... Uh, Fixed needs are, are things that we have to account for every single month, that it's, it's a necessity for us. It's usually the same from month to month. It includes maybe rent, mortgage, maybe a phone bill, car payments, student loan payments, credit card payments, or an electric bill. Uh, these are all expenses that we just can't avoid. These are must-have. These are needs. Then we have variable needs. Uh, you know, variable needs are probably some of the things that, you know, we might be able to scale back. Uh, they're also necessities, but again, they're not the same from month to month. They may vary, and they include like gas, food, pet supplies, uh, necessary clothing. Um, you know, being in San Francisco, you probably don't have the same type of uh, weather fluctuation that we have here uh, in New York. Uh, so it's very important for us here in New York to make sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're dressing appropriately for the weather. Uh, wants are non-essentials. Um, you know, they might include meals at a restaurant, movies, uh, gym memberships, electronics, gifts, and unnecessary clothing. Um, I can tell you that when you're in a metropolitan area like San Francisco or New York City, uh, you may think that wants are, are truly needs, but they're, they're not. Uh, and again, it's very important for us to take a step back and take a look. And if we're not saving any money, if our 
our expenses are far exceeding our income, uh, that's really where we need to start scaling back a little bit. Otherwise, we're never going to be able to achieve some of not only our short-term goals, which is uh, that emergency rainy day fund, or even our long-term goals in being able to put money away maybe for retirement or maybe the purchase of a home. You add the total amount of the money that you spend on a monthly basis on your fixed needs, your variable needs and your wants, and then obviously you subtract it from your monthly earnings. If you have a surplus again, it means you're in good shape. That means you're doing the right thing. Set goals. Every day that I wake up, it is my goal to speak to as many librarians and patrons as possible uh, to give you the information that's needed. And I set goals for myself every day. Um, being in, an, in a wealth manager for 28 years, uh, I set goals every day, not only for myself, for my family, uh, but I also set those goals uh, for my clients. And now I also set those goals uh, not only for my uh, colleagues, my fellow librarians, uh, but also uh, the patrons of the libraries as well. So I set goals to, um, you know, to pretty much uh, plan for success. Short-term goals, those are ones that you can reach in less than a year. Mid-term goals usually take one to three years to reach. Long-term goals take many years to reach. Uh, some people may never own a home. Some people, it takes them 15 to 20 years before they can go ahead and make a purchase on a home. And some people like myself are still striving for retirement. Uh, I hope to get there one day, uh, but being able to put away for retirement is very important. A short-term goal may be to pay off a credit card, a midterm goal, maybe student loans, a car loan, and obviously saving money for retirement uh, is and should be everybody's long-term goal. Long-term goals, set up, save for an emergency fund. Set a goal for six months of expenses for your emergency fund. If you lose your job, you have large unexpected expenses, you can turn to your emergency fund. After you have money in your emergency fund, then I think it's vital for you to set up a retirement savings goal. Whether it be at work in, in a 401k, uh, maybe an individual retirement account, it's really important that you start putting away for retirement. Um, I'll share a personal experience uh, for setting up for an emergency fund. Uh, I did have the unfortunate experience to uh, be there uh, for 9-11. Um, and it did take, I did share this with Doreen and JP, it did take me about uh, anywhere from five to six weeks to sort of recoup uh, from what had taken place. Uh, and I did actually have to uh, go into my emergency fund to cover some of my expenses. Uh, so firsthand, I felt on how important it really was to be able to have that rainy day fund. Now, we went over how to build a budget. Now, what I implore everyone to do uh, after the presentation or maybe sometime tomorrow, uh, the financial literacy suite uh, workbooks that are available to you for free uh, usually range anywhere from 50 to 85 pages. It all depends on what topic uh, you're speaking about. It is very detailed. Uh, it is very informational. It is very easy to follow, but you're going to find a lot more information there than we're talking about this evening. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have 50 minutes to talk about both, uh, you know, topics, uh, but you'll have that opportunity if you're a library patron of the San Francisco Public Library and you hold a public library card uh, to be able to go in and and, and research this uh, on your own uh, and really get as detailed as you would like to with not only uh, how to uh, keep and maintain a budget, but even more importantly, find out what type of investor are you? I think that when we're working at a, for a budget and we wind up getting that surplus and we wind up uh, achieving our goal of having that six month rainy day fund, emergency fund, uh, it's important that we start putting money away for retirement. And one of the things I think that uh, 
people dive right into is they look at investments and they look at returns right away. And they don't look at any other type of risk that's involved. And that's why I think ultimately it's very important. And I think it's probably one of the most important uh, books in our entire financial literacy suite um, is what type of investor are you? Because before we can go ahead and start investing, uh, it's important for us to find out what type of risk tolerance we actually have. Investments should be a long-term goal. Uh, however, uh, it, is a, it is a goal and it, investments could cause you to stay awake at night. Uh, you, we need to find out investment risk. We need to really determine what your risk tolerance is. Um, managing risk with diversification. And you can also set up a watch list to help manage your investments in the market. Um, I can tell you that, you know, somebody that might be, you know, with have a nest egg of, let's say, $500,000 in their retirement plan and somebody who has $50,000 in their retirement plan, but they're right at the same age. I think that possibly the person that has $500,000 uh, in their long term retirement savings plan might be able to take on a little bit more risk than the person who has just $50,000 saved. 10% one way, the other could be devastating for one where maybe it isn't for the other. Maybe the level of annual income coming in is quite different. So, you know, risk tolerance is very different for many different people. So it's really important that we find out what type of investor we are before maybe we dive in and maybe take a look at individual equity stock, uh, which are probably at the higher scale of the risk factor. Eh, to oppose to maybe mutual funds that maybe have anywhere from 50 to 200 uh, different companies inside of it. It helps alleviate a lot of the risk in the portfolio with that level of diversification or even uh, exchange traded funds that have a little more diversification than an individual security itself. Again, you know, we'll be able to make those smart, educated decisions once we find out what type of investor we are. Investment risk. Any decision you make involves a, de a degree of risk. We all need to recognize this. Concerning investments, risk equates to uncertainty. All investments carry risk. Whether it's time risk, whether it's uh, inflation risk, um, risk is, and, and even political risk, there's risk of abound. Uh, there's uh, employment risk. Uh, you know, if you're buying a new home or a new car, you know, will you be able to make the required payments without fail? I think that's very important. Uh, will your financial investment have a negative impact on your overall financial plan? Again, setting up a budget, setting up short and long-term goals are very, very important. Will you make money? Well, you know, again, uh, some people that maybe have money just sitting in a regular money market fund, maybe not earning as much interest as needed, um, it's going to take them a lot longer to be able to achieve, you know, achieve their long-term goals. Will you lose a portion or all your in original investment? And again, that's all going to be based upon what your risk tolerance is. Obviously, the more aggressive that you get, uh, usually it goes with risk and reward. The more risk you take, you typically get more reward. However, with risk, sometimes comes a down market. And you have to be able to be prepare yourself for that as well. Will your investment fail? And again, that's another key reason why to set up a watch list on the Weiss Financial Ratings uh, tool so that once you go ahead and you set up your own profile on Weiss Financial Ratings, and you put some of maybe it's a mutual fund or a company that you own with a watch list, uh, you set up your own account there. And if there is an upgrade or a downgrade in a company, you automatically get an email. We all get tied up in our everyday lives. And not every day we're looking at the stock market. We're tied up doing what we do on a day to day basis. So to be able to get those wonderful alerts, letting us know whether or not there's been an upgrade or a downgrade, uh, in a portion of our portfolio, uh, it will then allow us to go in, take
take a look and see if we need to make any adjustments in the portfolio uh, to adjust for risk, that is. Determining your risk tolerance. Conservative risk tolerance, short-term investments, usually bonds are the main uh, interest because you know, they don't fluctuate to large degrees. And then you also have moderate risk tolerance. Those are small market changes that are tolerable for yourself. Um, you like to equally distribute your investments between stocks and bonds. Um, so uh, a lot of people will call those with mutual funds, balance funds, uh, but it's a really good way to diversify your income because typically when a stock market is up and a, and a bond market is down, if you have a little bit of both, it sort of it acts as an equilibrium. And I always recommend that you try to diversify your portfolio uh, regardless of your risk tolerance. High risk tolerance, market changes don't bother you at all. The potential for greater returns excites you more than the concern of losing principal. Stocks are better than bonds because you have more opportunity to earn. Again, individual securities, stocks are a little more aggressive than bonds and with risk comes reward. How do we manage overall risk? Again, I talked about diversifying your portfolio. Keep your dollars in different baskets. Could be large cap companies, mid cap companies, small cap companies, maybe even international companies. And then we also certainly have fixed income bonds. Uh, and those can go in the way of corporate bonds. They could be in the way of municipal bonds. Uh, and they could even be government bonds, which are a little less aggressive than corporate bonds. The difference between stock and bonds, stock, you actually partake in ownership of the company. Bonds, you're actually a creditor to the company. So with a bond, you're actually purchasing what we would call paper with a promissory that at the end of the term of that bond, you'll be able to receive your principal in full, but in the meantime, you'll be able to earn the interest that that bond is supposed to be paying you. If one industry experiences a downturn, other stock categories will gain and hopefully continue to earn for you. Asset allocation helps you spread your wealth into varied classes of investments like I spoke about small, mid, large cap, international, like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Long-term investing also reduces risk because you have time to ride out the market fluctuations. Again, your time horizon means a lot. If you're 55 years of age and you're just starting out for retirement now, you need to realize we have a certain amount of catching up to do. So you might need to be a little riskier. If we've been investing for quite some time now and we're 55 years old and we're starting to venture into that uh, retirement phase, we might want to scale back and become a little bit more conservative because we have a very shorter time horizon before we might need to touch that money for additional income in retirement. Setting up a watch list. Weiss Financial Ratings allows you to create your own personalized account with a watch list. So that's a, an account that you can certainly go in, set up, set up your email, and anything that's sitting in your watch list, again, uh, Weiss Financial Ratings, especially in the stocks and mutual funds and exchange traded fund section of our database, uh, it, it gets updated on a daily basis. So if there's an upgrade or a downgrade, you're immediately alerted via email. Life changes may come and you'll want to be able to evaluate everything that's going on, at least on an annual basis. If your current investments fit your current risk tolerance, um, it's like going to the doctor. You, everybody needs a checkup. Um, it, we may feel like we feel fantastic, uh, but it's really important for us to visit the doctor. Sometimes blood work tells us that uh, we have high blood pressure or there are more things that are happening. So it's always great, at least on an annual basis, to go back, review your portfolio, uh, 
see where you are. See maybe on if you've lost money throughout the year. Maybe you've gained some money throughout the year. Uh, maybe you might want to take some of the, the gains off the table and redistribute those gains. Uh, though that's what we would call dollar cost averaging uh, into other securities. Uh, but this is something that should be done at least on an annual basis. And with Weiss Financial Ratings, you'll certainly be able to go in and evaluate your investments. And you'll also be able to get the research tools uh, that are necessary for you to make great educated decisions. So I do not have a clock in front of me, uh, but I certainly wanted to, uh, I wanted to go in, I wanted to let you know exactly how you can go in and how you can achieve uh, looking at some of the database that is available to you. You can always visit the San Francisco Public Library website, click on research and learn, articles and database, uh, I believe Doreen went over this, and I'm certainly going to uh, follow up with this. Uh, and let's see if we could just pull up another screen here. And let's see here. So we're going to go and share this screen right here. And again, uh, you know, we're going to simply go into uh, books and media. Uh, excuse me, research and learn. I apologize for that. Articles and database. And we just hit that W right there. And we scroll right down to uh, Weiss ratings. Now, once we get to Weiss ratings, let's see here. I want to be able to get in here and I want to be able to show you the uh, the Weiss financial ratings uh, page so that we can certainly uh, go ahead and, and take a look at that for you. But for some reason it is not pulling up and I apologize for that. Um, Tom, would you like a card number to type in there? I can just send you a private message with that. Uh, hold on one moment. There shouldn't be any reason why uh, my wife's financial ratings is, is not up uh, and ready for me to use. So let me just go with a new use page here. Uh, let's see. And I, again, I apologize for that. Um, you know what? Let me go ahead and let me just pull up my screen here. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why uh, I do not have this uh, lined up here for you. And I do apologize for that. Um, let me just take a quick look here, if you can just bear with me for a moment. All right. What I'll do is I'll just go straight in here and Okay, there we go. And let me go ahead and share the screen here with you. Okay, so everyone should be able to see this screen now. Um, can you see the screen, Doreen? Yeah, we see yeah, it. We see Fantastic. It. I apologize and I thank uh, everybody for uh, their patience. I'm just going to go straight over to the literacy tool uh, section of the database here. Uh, this is actually what uh, your screen will look like when you log in with your public library number. Uh, as you can see here in the literacy tools, you have consumer guides. 
you have financial literacy basics, you have financial literacy planning for the future, and you have financial literacy how to become an investor. What I want to do is we want to go to literacy basics. And these are all of the books that are available to you. Now, there's how to make and stick to a budget. And all we would need to do is simply click on that PDF and it'll download the PDF for you. Uh, and there's about 65 pages that are available to really help you game plan to make and stick to a budget. Now, as you can see, how to manage debt, buying a car, understanding auto insurance, rent, renting an apartment, understanding renter's insurance, calculating for cost of college. As you can see, uh, there are a whole host of really great educational books that are available to you. Uh, the financial literacy, uh, how to become an investor. We have what is investing, different types of brokerage firms. And the topic that we covered today is right there. And I know that Doreen is going to share that with you as well. What type of investor are you? Now, this book is probably is about 80 some odd pages long, um, but it's a really great book. Different types of financial advisors, whether it's a, a, a discount house, whether it's an online firm, uh, whether you're dealing with a wealth manager, um, all about investment fees and tax consequences. Obviously, there's long-term and short-term capital gains. And then one of the hot topics is uh, alternative investments. Everybody's talking about cryptocurrency uh, and some of the alternative investments like commodities, especially where we are now in the current energy sector of the market. Again, this is all available to you right underneath the literacy suite. And we also have planning for the future. Again, this is all, all these books are available to you. I only chose two topics to go over today. Okay. So we actually, uh, we actually ended a, the section a little earlier than I anticipated, which now will actually leave us about 15 to 20 minutes to be able to take any questions that you might have. Uh, Again, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And sometimes I may even refer you to uh, certainly go to the database itself uh, and take a look to have some of your questions answered. So uh, with that being said, um, I'd like to move straight on in to uh, the Q&A. And I know I believe at this point we're going to stop 